Hello everyone, it's that boy Josh, here with another video just on prepping my top block and getting all the springs, bow stems and everything else back in. I brought upgraded springs which I'll show you later on out, later on throughout the video. Uh, but for now, let's get all the duct tape off from when we painted it and get a bit of scotch bright around all the areas that the duct tape hasn't quite covered up. <laughs> So you can see here is the valve stem, valve spring, and the little seat on top. When it presses down, it actuates that way. Um, what we need to do here is, you see all the burnt bits here? I'm going to be polishing all of that off and cleaning all of these up. Like I said, I've already brought uprated springs, so we'll be getting rid of these. And hopefully this should sit back on top. <laughs> This is how they've turned out like after being here for about an hour. <laughs> no, it can't turn out too bad. Pretty much like brand new. Pretty much, I wouldn't go that far, but they're as good as we're going to get them. Go right for the camera, sorry. So I can't argue with that. So before you go ahead and put the valve stems in, you're going to have to grind around this surface here and this surface here. It's just to bed them in to make sure no exhaust gases or air leaks through when they are uh, mating down like this. Because there's nothing to say that's perfectly uh, so, like the contact is being made all the way around. Nothing's telling you that. So, what you need to do is get yourself a tool like this. Well, one minute. Like that, without putting any pressure on. And just spin like so but you need grinding compound in between the two which I've just got this one here not sponsored <laughs> but just some fine grinding compound which I'll put in between on the face around here drop it in and just polish away one thing to note when you are grinding them in is to make sure that you say if you ground this one for this hole to make sure you keep them with the same hole uh with the same stem because obviously you've seated it for that one it's the same principle for each one if you're going to grind it for that one keep it for that one because if you're using it on that one who's to say that's fully made i hope you can see that there i've just um put grinding compound all the way around just the tip of the valve stem there where it's going to be mating on the uh, steel and so surface there. Drop it in like so. Get your tool. Try and make it central if possible. Without putting any pressure downwards, just ever so slightly. A little bit of pressure downwards, sorry. Just back and forth. So you can notice the difference in sound when you've ground through that, the high spots and stuff, you'll be able to hear the difference in sound of the surface being made. Now you can see 
the difference in the tone. I don't know if you can, if the camera will focus. You can kind of see there the light gray surface. It's a little bit out of focus, but you can still make do with what it is. You can see the light surface has been ground around, but I'm just gonna do it a few more times just to make sure. You might be tempted to use a drill or something just to make this process speed up, but don't be a cowboy or a pikey. You want to use your hands because with the weight of the drill, you can lean left, right, anywhere and put too much wear on one of the sides. So what you need to do now is clean it up. And if you have, got yourself some engineer's blue, rub it around the surface, and that will just highlight to you all the high spots and low spots. Right, you can notice the difference between the two of the valve stems of this one here, where I've um, bedded it in, and this one here, which I haven't. You see the nice gray line all the way around it. So that should be seating into this valve stem properly. But just to make sure, like I said, I'm gonna clean this up, put some engineer's blue around it, and just see the surface. So here's the engineer's blue that I'm using. Uh, good luck trying to get the lid off of the tub because it's really hard three weeks later i finally got the lid off so now you don't need much of this literally just finger full get your valve stem that's what you need to do drop him in same tool again And back out. And now, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can kind of see the blue tinge all the way around. Therefore meaning your valve stem has been mated up to the surface and you can go ahead and assemble that. You must make sure you do that for all of these or else it's not gonna run properly. Oh, it'll be running a bit shit. So as you can see, after many, many hours of polishing, I've used engineer's blue all the way around. And you can see in the light, that it wants to be looking like that. Fully seated all the way around. So when it comes back up, it's not letting any excess gas through. There's still one I've got to do, but a little bit more of. You can see that line there with the gap in the top right hand corner of it. Just try and chase up everything. I mean, if you strip down your engine this far, you might as well chase every little bit you can really. But that's the kind of seeing that you're looking for, that you want. So we're now just going to be putting in the bow stems here. Um, I've got my oil over here. I'm using the oil that I'm going to be running the engine in with, which is just some mineral oil, just to help the parts seat better for the first 500 miles, and then I'll be draining that out. Um, as you can see, there's two different valve stems with this engine. Um, so it's always best to mark up which ones you've took them out of. Brought new springs. These are uh, Matson performance springs, which just allow the engine to go up uh, higher on the rev range. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and fit all these. What I'm going to do is, like I say, oil them up a bit. All up the holes it's going down into, just a bit. Well, that just pushes in. Still a little bit of burnt mark on that, but what can we do about it? Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and oil all these holes whilst I've done it. 
slow burn. So there you go. You can see how these four go in on this side. I'll probably just time lapse the process of me doing all of these ones and then skip over to the other side so you can see the process on the next side. <laughs> flipped it over after putting in all the valve stems uh, lighting's a bit rubbish here or a bit too good you can see I've started putting on the valve um, seals here you get them in a little basket I got them in a basket with my hour ring uh, head gasket kit when I brought them um, what you need to do is well, what I've been doing anyway is let me see if I can, I can show you if I can show you Pop it on there. I've obviously put some oil on all of these before, just to help them guide on a little bit better. Um, using a tool, I'm using a. See if it will focus. Where is it? Kennedy 11 mil extension socket. It's just so it pushes on the edge. And it pushes down on that easy. And then I'm looking through the gap there. You can't really see it, did you? But there you go. I was looking through the gap there. See if I can make it focus. There you go. I was looking through the gap there. You can see that line. Well, I've just covered it now. But that line there, that's just showing that it's fully seated down. But yeah, you just rinse and repeat for all of these along here to insert the file stems. I've also, whilst I've got the camera up, there's my old springs and there's the Mapton springs. Difference in them, really. Well, the lengths and the force, really. And that one's proper tough. I can kind of compress this one. But obviously, that's done 160k miles compared to where that's brand new. But yeah, they're a the difference in the two. All good stuff. Good job, that's the old one, isn't it? What I've got here is our Mapton springs, or graded springs. Um, well, really can notice the difference in there from the old ones that I took out. Uh, you've got your spring compression set here. Top bit for the spring, that just helps it compress in. We go on top of your valve stem. What all these do is basically retain the spring into the top, they drop into that, sit into that, which then holds your spring in. I'll try and do it in this one here, which is probably easier to look at. So yeah, you put that in there, drop that on top of there, like so, and then compress that using your valve compression kit, which, I've just got this cheap one off eBay and it did the job even with the old springs so let's hope they'll do them. good job of this one so what I've done now is just set up the back of this uh, valve spring compressor this is just a cheap one off eBay 
Don't have to spend too much on them to be honest with you. Use this little tiny thing to compress it, hopefully. It's that easy. Right. So what I like to do now, now that's going in nicely, that's sitting properly. Just stick a drill on the end of it, make sure that's sat on the back properly, which it is. And that's when press it in, it's just slipping a little bit. Right, I've run out of pressure now. And that's just exposed the collets. I might have to wind it in just a little bit more. Hopefully we've got the extension on this. If not, I'll have to swap it out for a longer one. So now I've just turned it over, compressed that in a little bit more. I've got the drill, compressed it in, wound it in a little bit more, and then just use the handle to wind it in that little bit extra for further. Just using a bit of grease now, put on the collets here. General assembly grease this is. Don't have to use too much. It's just so it will they help some stick to the valves so they're not falling off anywhere. So I think I've got a magnet. I'm just gonna go grab the magnet for it. Make it life a lot easier. So I'm just gonna gonna grab the magnet. So hopefully this will work. I'm not stick to everything else. <laughs> like it is. Coming from the other way. Magnet's good for getting it down there, but how can you release it? Right, let me get a small screwdriver. A little pokey thing. Oh, I've got it on there, but 180 degrees out. So that's one half on there. Now for the other. Now you gotta be careful. When I say it's 180 degrees out, they've got a taper to them, so they can only go in one way. Which, I've just done that one quite easy. <laughs> but yeah, they've only got a taper. They've got a taper on them, so they'll only go in one way. And it's like a cone shape, sorry, when I say a taper. Um, so when you release the spring, it should sit against the cone and Therefore, give it the compression. So here you can see what the spring looks like there. Don't worry about that. That's just a little bit of grease that I told you about that helps it stick to it. And that's it with the upgraded spring in it. With the upgraded spring set. So, that's that focus. You've just got to repeat that process. <laughs> so many times. 16. So, yeah, I'll probably put on time lapse now and you'll see me work away. springs now to the top block I've just got to fit these but they're looking a little bit worse for wear so I'm just going to polish them up a bit and then I'll fit them in so I've fitted the hydraulic cam followers as you can see here and now I'm going to put the cams in camshafts in um, I'll do this off camera and then I think that's probably as far as I'm going to go for tonight with the top block right so that's it I've tightened all the bearing caps on I've tightened all the sprockets up uh, I've talked them up as well so that's as far as we can take the top block for now um, I can do obviously all the little bits like put the uh, exhaust repair kit in but to be fair to you it's a couple of studs so I think I'm going to do that off video um, but yeah that's as far as we've got so far thanks for watching guys stay tuned for another video